Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Jim, and welcome to Jim's Retros. The first set of videos, we're going to talk about the Pi 1541 and what you can do with it on a Commodore class machine and its IEC bus. Here's one complete. Across the next series of videos, we'll build one and test one and display what it can do for the 8-bit community. So here's the PCB. You can see it's uh, blank right now, but uh, you can see the layout on the board, uh, the header at the top there that plugs into the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi. There's a uh, circle on the right for the speaker, uh, then the uh, 7406 hex inverter. Uh, and what's important about that on this model particularly is you don't necessarily have to use it, but if you do use it, you can then daisy chain things together on the Commodore IEC bus. So that's kind of cool. You could uh, certainly hook up older 1541 drives, printers, etc., anything else that can sit on the IEC bus or the serial bus on the Commodore can also operate here with this with this device since it has the 7406 hex inverter. Uh, just left of that in that more uh, squarish, rectangular-ish uh, shape is the level shifter, and that takes the uh, TTL 5 volt signal from the Commodore uh, system to 3.3 volts uh, for use on the Raspberry Pi. That's critical. If you didn't use that, you'd be frying some electronics in the circuit there. Um, other things are kind of nice to have. Um, on the bottom, you see switch 1 through switch 5, and those switches are there. Um, if you have a OLED hooked up as a display, you can actually use those buttons to navigate on the display and choose which disk image you'd like to actually quote unquote insert into the drive. And we'll demonstrate that later. And then on the left in the two square boxes uh, are the two IEC connectors that uh, get mounted on the board. Those look like this. And so there will be two sitting on the board there so you can hook up, uh, like I mentioned, daisy chain devices and so forth. So let's get started. Let's build one of these and uh, we'll see where we go and demonstrate from there. So here we have all the parts laid out that we're going to assemble on the board. Starting from the left we have the five switches that will be mounted on the lower part of the PCB. We have some header stock that's going to be cut down to be the pin headers on the board. We have the two IEC sockets on the bottom there of the picture. There's a small buzzer that will be the speaker. Here's a momentary 6x6 switch, a 6x6 millimeter switch which will be used for the reset function. Here is the 40 pin header that will actually connect the Pi hat the Pi 1541 hat to the to the Pi, and then there's the OLED uh, pigtail there, the multicolored wire twisted together at the top. We see the power filter capacitor next to the red and green LEDs there, the little orange uh, 104 class capacitor. Do the power filtering on the 7406. The green LED will be the power LED. The red LED will be the activity LED, and then here, uh, still in somewhat a packaged mode, is the OLED screen. There are four resistors on the board, two 1K ohm resistors and two 220 ohm resistors to take a little bit of the power away from the LEDs so they're not as bright. It works well. One item I failed to show was the socket and the 7406 hex inverter. Very simply, uh, it's a 14 pin uh, dip socket and then that chip will plug right in there on the board. It's best to do it that way just in case you have any troubles with the 7406 or if it for whatever reason uh, fails to function or something like that. It's uh, easier to troubleshoot. You could swap it out with a different one, etc. And these parts again are very very readily available at Newark or any of the DigiKey, any, any of the places like that that uh, sell parts online. Just Google for it, you'll find it. 
Okay, here's one fully assembled. And you can see the five switches at the bottom. The reset switch, the two color LEDs. The uh, hex inverter is mounted in its socket. We got the level shifter uh, just to the left of the IC there, kind of center screen. The two IEC sockets, which mount nicely on the side. And then there's the buzzer, which actually simulates the clicking of the drive if you like that. And if you don't like that, you can undo that jumper right there on the end and it'll disable the speaker. Um, on the bottom, there are some items that need to be addressed here. Since we are using the level, the, I'm sorry, not the level shifter, the hex inverter, up top you'll see the 7406 or simple mode in those series of jumpers there. You want to solder across those two pads at the top to enable the 7406. You don't have to use a 7406, um, but it's obviously nice to have other things on the IEC bus. But if you just wanted to have just the drive itself and not have to worry about the you know the hex inverter and everything like that, you can just uh, solder across the simple at the bottom, and it just basically bypasses the 7406 chip altogether. Um, just to the left of that, where it says J9, um, I always solder the top one, and I'll have to look up what that's for. I believe that means um, uh, it looks for the SRQ signal in a certain fashion, but yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, just side of the top two pads, you'll be fine. Works well in in, in pretty much any configuration. And then, and then towards the bottom center uh, is the configuration for the OLED display. I always um, make mine 3.3 volts, uh, and so there's the there's the uh, solder pad to do that. If you do have a 5 volt one, you can certainly do that as well, but make sure you solder the top one. Um, and then the other configuration there, as you see. I always use bus one, which is the uh, pad to the right uh, on the top two little uh, solder pads there. And then um, just how you want the VCC and ground going to your OLED. Typically it's always on the left side uh, for those two solder pads. One other important note is the little power connector here for the OLED. It's a four pin header uh, pretty much in the center of the board. The uh, two left hand most pins are power as labeled there the two right hand pins are SCL and SDA uh, also as labeled right there please pay close attention to that when you're hooking up your OLED and the OLED has to be connected before you boot the device or it won't be recognized properly on the top of the OLED display you'll see ground VCC SCL and SDA um, that lines up exactly with the four pin header on the board and make sure whatever color code you use and certainly I use uh, red and black for the power and then yellow and white for the data make sure you have that configuration properly connected on both sides if you don't you run the risk of frying uh, probably the LED uh, but at 3.3 volts I think you'd be okay if it was a 5 volt one certainly uh, you might might do some damage but just double check before you power it up and um, it should be just fine and so here you see on the four pin header I have the power hooked up on the left there where it says power and then the yellow and white hooked up where the data lines are SCL and SDA okay guys here it is all hooked up we have the OLED display hooked up the Pi Hat is on a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus uh, with the standoffs. The standoffs are uh, M2.5, 11 millimeters tall. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's, it it'll, uh, certainly we have to go through the configuration of the SD card to boot the, the, the uh, Raspberry Pi itself. But from a hardware standpoint, this is uh, fully configured now and ready for uh, the the micro SD card to be programmed and uh, set up to run, which is fairly trivial. And there's a link below on how to actually do that. I'm not going to get into that with this video because your installation may vary. But from a hardware standpoint, this is ready to go. And so we're going to demonstrate it booting. And what you'll see on the screen is a small uh, replica of a 
Commodore 1541 and then it should bring up the directory and if I can hold the camera while I actually plug this in here I'm not doing too well there we go the green LED will come on you'll see a small logo on the screen there it is and then it'll come up with a directory um, one thing to note is if this is plugged in and turned on before the Commodore machine is turned on and the cables connected you'll see the little icon on the screen and then it'll just be blank that's okay that's it's doing exactly it's waiting for the the interrupt signal on the IEC bus when the Commodore machine is turned on you will then see this directory as you see uh, on the screen right now uh, and so you can now navigate the directory uh, with these navigation buttons scroll through what's on the disk or what's on the SD card rather and um, if you want to pick that particular disk image uh, the first button is basically select or enter if you will it loads the image and uh, it's ready then to be um, loaded from the Commodore machine just as if it were a disk in a real 1541 drive I hope you've enjoyed this video. There will be many more coming. This video, uh, we went over the Pi 1541, um, maybe how to, how to build one for yourself. If you don't want to build one yourself and you would rather just purchase one, there's a link below on a good, good place to get one. Uh, it happens to be my eBay store. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to help you out in any way I can. If you like this video, please select like. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down button and consider subscribing to the channel. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks and have a great day.